One of the great moral atrocities in the last several years is taking place right before us, and very few are remarking upon it. And it has to do with Derek Chauvin. He's the Minneapolis cop who became famous Memorial Day 2020 when George Floyd died. Chauvin is now serving 21 years in federal prison for murder, for killing George Floyd. The problem is he did not murder George Floyd. And we know that conclusively because the medical examiner who performed the autopsy on George Floyd confirmed he was not asphyxiated. He was not choked to death. He most likely died of a drug OD. He had fatal levels of fentanyl in his system. And that's been known for some time, though, again, ignored. Ignored to the extent that, well, Derek Chauvin was convicted of murder and sent to prison. And then on November 24th of this year, right after Thanksgiving, Chauvin was stabbed 22 times by another inmate with an improvised knife. Now, the man who stabbed him is a known FBI informant. Derek Chauvin is now out of the hospital and back in Tucson. He is alive. He's still in prison. Gregory Erickson is his lawyer and joins us now to discuss this case. Mr. Erickson, thank you so much for coming on. Thank um, you. Thank you for, for having us on. First of all, how is your client? And if you don't mind, if news reports haven't said very much about what exactly happened. Would you tell us what you know? Well, I can tell you what we know, and it's not a tremendous amount. Everything, the only firsthand reports I'm getting from are from his family. Even though uh, my partner Bill Mormon and I are his attorneys uh, for for the for his appeal, and for perhaps some from perhaps for some from uh, post trial activities, uh, we attempted to contact the Tucson federal institution on numerous occasions and were rebuffed. Uh, my partner, Bill Mormon, has a contact at, at the prison that he had been working with throughout the appeal to get a hold of Derek for various things. And basically, after the stabbing, he went dark. What we do know, and this is from the family. Uh, may, may, I you, may, they, I you, may I interrupt you? Is a prison allowed to prevent an inmate in the middle of an appeals process from speaking to his lawyers. I didn't know that was legal. No, I, and they're, they're not. They're, they're not allowed to keep him. But they didn't keep him from my partner during the appeal process. It was really only after the stabbing that basically the family and the lawyers were shut out for a period of it over 48 hours. Hmm. And so what we know is from Derek reporting to his family members about what happened. Um, basically, he was in the law library and how he was allowed to be in the law library with other prisoners, I don't know. I'm not familiar with the inner workings of federal prison, but I would think that somebody as high profile as Derek probably shouldn't be allowed to be in there unsupervised, but he was in there supposedly unsupervised and uh, another inmate with an improvised knife attacked him from behind and stabbed him 22 times. I think it's a little confusing to Americans who still think our justice system is fair or works at all to know that it's been shown, I would say conclusively by the medical examiner, that George Floyd was not murdered. Um, and yet your client is still in prison for murdering him. How, how did this happen? Well, I. I don't, you need to understand, Tucker, we are constitutional specialists, and that's why we were selected to do this appeal. We are not day-to-day -day criminal trial attorneys. So how it happened, well, I, I can tell you how it happened. First of all, when the judge denied the motion to change venue, it basically conducted the trial in an area where everyone who was on that jury was afraid for their safety. Yes. You know, when when you make when you make a you know, the the National Guard was not there to protect the jurors if they made a guilty verdict. They were there to protect the jurors if they made a not guilty verdict. I'm assuming the point was this was at, at the moment when the people in charge were telling us the problem with America was white cops because they're white not racist or anything. Right. Um, and right. and your and that, client that's was a why, white cop. So that's kind of the point. Well, and that's why when the medical examiner comes and has an initial autopsy report of a drug overdose, because his lungs were literally filled with fluid, which is a, 
a sign of a fentanyl overdose. Yes, that's why you mind can't you, breathe. Yes. Mind you, George Floyd had previously